वेलकम एवरी वन एंड आर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक फॉर द टूडे इज सम इम्पॉर्टेंट टर्म्स विच आर यूज इन थर्मोडाइनामिक्स इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड थर्मोडाइनामिक्स इन डिटेल यू मस्ट हैव अ गुड कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ऑल दीज टर्म्स द फर्स्ट टर्म इज थर्मोडाइनामिक सिस्टम सराउंडिंग्स एंड बाउंड्री वट इज अ थर्मोडाइनामिक सिस्टम any part of the universe under thermodynamic study that is called as the thermodynamic system mean system is part of the universe which is under a consideration in which we are studying or we are observing the heat changes which are involved so that will be called as the thermodynamic system surroundings what is meant by the surroundings everything in the universe other than system which is not in our consideration in which we are not discussing the heat changes or energy changes that is called as the surrounding and surrounding may also be called as the environment or it may also be called as the reservoir so whenever you see any term in thermodynamics like surroundings environment or reservoir they are all same main surroundings are the environment or reservoir in which the system is present the next term is the separation of the system and surrounding and that separating wall or that separation of the system and surrounding is called as the boundary as far as the boundary is concerned you can see that this boundary may be real or imaginary it may be fixed or movable what is meant by all these we will discuss them in today this diagram schematic diagram shows that this box is your universe and this one is the small part of that universe which is under our consideration in which we are studying the energy changes and this is called as system system may also be defined as quantity of matter of fixed identity which is separated from surroundings by a boundary so this is second definition of the system and the surroundings are the environment or reservoir in which the system is present and boundary is the separation between the system and the surroundings whenever we discuss the system and surroundings the system and surroundings exchange energy and matter with each other so they exchange matter and they exchange energy whenever i will say that the energy is exchanged between system and surrounding actually that energy is exchanged in two ways either in the form of heat or in the form of work so keep this thing in your mind that energy exchange between the system and surrounding either takes place in the form of work or in the form of heat how it takes place it will be discussed in some other lecture <clears throat> now let me give you some examples of the boundaries and the systems suppose that i am in this room and i want to measure the temperature of this room with the help of the thermometer what is the temperature in this room actually so this room is my system which is under my consideration under my study the walls and the ceilings of this room they are actually the boundaries so these boundaries are the real boundaries basically and anything outside this room that is surroundings all other rooms which are present in this home and also the street and everything else in the universe that will be the surrounding in this case the boundary is actually the real boundary but imaginary boundary can also be understood in this example let's suppose that a person comes and he opens the door of this room when the door will be opened now this area of the door it has no solid boundary now but now the imaginary boundary is there between this room and the outside tv lounge or anything so that will be the example of the imaginary boundary now same is the case that you have a glass of water 
and you are studying the water which is present in the glass so water will be your system the glass walls that will be your boundary and that glass is also covered with a lid so the walls of glass walls and the lid that will be the solid boundary and everything else the environment in which that glass full of water will be present it will be your surroundings but if you take the lid off the glass then the solid boundary is removed now at that point there will be imaginary boundary that will separate the water from the surrounding mean the system from the surroundings in the same way the boundary is sometimes fixed just like you can consider that you are studying a gas in a cylinder and the cylinder has a piston which is locked it cannot be moved so that will be an example of the fixed boundary but if you are studying a gas in a cylinder and the cylinder has a movable piston you can move it up and down and you can you can easily increase or decrease the volume of the gas so this boundary will be example of the movable boundary so that was about the boundary now boundary is very 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 important why because it is the boundary which defines a system actually the exchange of energy or matter in between the system and surrounding that will always occur through that boundary whether the boundary is perme permeable or semi permeable or impermeable that will decide the nature of the system and as far as the <coughs> thermodynamic system is concerned on the basis of the this line is very important on the basis of the permeability of the boundary wall we divide the thermodynamic system into three main categories the first category is the open system when you are discussing the open system most often you will observe the imaginary boundary because open system is a system m stands for matter e stands for energy and plus minus stands for exchange so in case of open system the matter and energy both will be exchanged between the system and the surroundings just like you have a cup of tea so in that cup of tea there will be some vapors that will be produced they will be moving in the surroundings and also the exchange of energy from that hot tea to the cold surroundings that all, that will also take place in the form of heat so this is open system open system cannot be at thermodynamic equilibrium ever because the matter and energy both are continuously being exchanged with the surrounding so it can never never come to the thermodynamic equilibrium the second system is the closed system in case of closed system and the third isolated system you will see real boundary between the system and the surrounding that boundary will not be the imaginary boundary no closed system is a system in which matter is zero it simply means that matter will not be exchanged between the system and the surroundings but the energy that can be exchanged plus minus shows that the exchange of energy between system and surrounding will take place but there will be no exchange of the matter if you are having tea in a system in a sealed bottle in such a way that the vapors cannot pass out but the energy exchange can take place that will be the example of the closed system the closed system because mass remains constant in the closed system or matter remains constant so this closed system it's sometimes also called as the control mass system the energy as i have already mentioned that the exchange of energy takes place either in the form of heat q or in the form of work w so closed system is further divided into the two categories one is the mechanically isolated mechanically isolated mean that in this closed system only the energy can be exchanged in the form of heat work done will be zero just like a cylinder with immovable piston there will be no work done but the exchange of energy with the surroundings can take place in the form of heat so that is mechanically isolated closed system basically the second is thermally isolated or you may also say that it is also called as the 
adiabatic closed system in this closed system the energy will be exchanged between the system and surrounding in the form of work mean energy will be exchange there will be exchange of energy between system and surrounding but that exchange will be in the form of the work but heat exchange is not possible and when the heat exchange is not possible it means that this closed system which is thermally isolated it will remain at constant temperature so these are two sub classes of the closed system basically now the third one is isolated system no exchange of mass no exchange of energy in between the system and surrounding can take place in an isolated system so it will be at the thermodynamic equilibrium because there is no exchange between system and surrounding so it will be at thermodynamic equilibrium as far as the real world is concerned no system is perfectly isolated system but a system can be made isolated for some duration of time but it will not be completely or perfectly an isolated system so but if someone insists that no please give some example of the isolated system then the best example of the isolated system is the universe itself the whole universe that will be an isolated system because it will not be having any surroundings so how it can exchange the material with which it will exchange the material when there is no surrounding so universe as a whole that is an example of the perfect isolated system so these are three very basic terms system surrounding and boundary and you must have an idea that when you are studying something it is your system everything else is your surrounding and the separation between the system and the surrounding that will be called as the boundary now the next term that we are going to discuss is the internal energy internal energy of system what is internal energy of system basically internal energy of a system is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy of particles of a system so sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy of particles of a system that is called as the internal energy the symbol of the internal energy you may see e or u in different books and the unit that is system international unit of the internal energy of the system it is joule basically now it is it must be quite clear to you people that this internal energy is actually the internal energy interior energy of the system mean particle of the system so in case when we are studying the internal energy actually we are discussing the energy of the molecules or atoms or ions so this one is the discussion of the energy at microscopic level suppose that there is a glass of water on a table and i move that gl glass of water on the table the kinetic energy of the system that will not be considered in the 
internal energy of the system in the overall system the glass full of water that is the overall system that is moving that energy will not be included in the internal energy or the potential energy of that glass due to its position it will also not be considered in the study of the internal energy what will be discussed in the study of the internal energy it will be the energy of the molecules of the water whether that is kinetic energy due to movement of the water molecules or it is potential energy due to interaction between the water molecules so in case of internal energy only the energy of the molecules and atoms is considered the overall energy of the system kinetic energy or potential energy that is not in our discussion in case of the internal energy internal energy is a state function simply means that it depends on the state initial and final state of the system and it doesn't depend on the pathway or path followed to bring about the change in it it is an extensive property extensive property means that it will depend upon the amount of the matter which is present in the system if the amount of the matter in the system is changed then the internal energy will also be changed what is the formula of the internal energy that is very simple that e is equal to kinetic energy rotational plus kinetic energy vibrational plus kinetic energy translational plus potential energy so all kinetic energies is summed up with a potential energy to get the total internal energy because it is a state function so its absolute value that cannot be measured so what we can measure actually that is the change in the internal energy and change in internal energy will be final internal energy minus initial internal energy why absolute value of the internal energy cannot be determined because whenever you will try to measure the absolute value of the internal energy of a system the system will be destroyed now listen this very carefully that internal energy is sometime also defined as that it is the maximum energy that a system can use to do work suppose that i am your system i have some internal energy and i can use that internal energy to do some work if you want to measure the absolute value of internal energy of mine what you will have to do keep me thirsty keep me hungry you will not give me any food because you want to measure the internal energy of mine i am your system and you want to measure my internal energy what will happen i will do work for one day two day three day by using my internal energy but you are insisting you are stubborn to measure my absolute value of my internal energy what will happen the system will collapse and you will not be able to measure the absolute value of the internal energy so absolute value is not measurable but you can measure the change in the internal energy suppose that the moment i am here this is my reference state so i have some internal energy and you will give me some food and after giving me some food again you will measure my internal energy and the change in internal energy that will be in front of you people so whenever you try to find the absolute value of the internal energy of a system the system will be destroyed because you will use maximum energy of it to do the work when the maximum energy will be used how the system can sustain that <coughs> the change in internal energy is measured by using the first law of thermodynamics what is first law of thermodynamics we will discuss it in detail at this point you are just required to remember that the 
change in internal energy is equal to heat Q and plus work W. And this is first law of thermodynamics. And actually the concept of the change in internal energy of a system that was established by the first law of the thermodynamics. Now let me tell you one thing. I have a question for you. If we have an isolated system, what will be the change in internal energy for an isolated system? An isolated system cannot exchange heat or work with its surrounding. Or you can say, instead of saying heat or work, you can say energy with its surrounding. So an isolated system cannot exchange the energy with its surroundings. When it cannot exchange the energy with its surroundings, then there will be no change in its energy. So the change in internal energy for an isolated system that is always equal to zero. Now if you have an ideal gas, suppose that we have an ideal gas. And one of the gas that is very close to ideality that is helium. So suppose that I am taking the example of the helium. Now, what will be the internal energy? What will be the formula of the internal energy? You must have an idea that in case of ideal gases, there is no interaction between the gas particles. When there is no interaction between the gas particles, so there will be no concept of the potential energy. Because I have taken example of the helium. Helium is a monoatomic gas. So in case of a monoatomic gas, you know, there is no rotational kinetic energy, no vibrational kinetic energy. So the only feature that is left, that is the translational kinetic energy. So I can say that in case of ideal gases, first of all, let us discuss it in a broad sense excluding the example of the helium that in case of the ideal gases the potential energy is not considered so internal energy is only due to the kinetic energy of the molecules of the ideal gases but if we are specifically talking about the noble gases because they are very close to ideality then in case of noble gases potential energy rotational and vibrational kinetic energy they are not considered in the study of the internal energy. So the internal energy of the monoatomic ideal gases will be just because of the translational kinetic energy. <coughs> the first case in which the change in internal energy that is zero, I have discussed it is of isolated system. If the question is that the system is not isolated but still the change in internal energy is zero but can be the case in which case the change in internal energy will be zero even if our system is not an example of the isolated system so then you can you will say that it can be zero in case of a cyclic process because in case of a cyclic process, the heat and work, they become equal. And when we consider Q minus W, because I will explain it in detail, that what will be the sign of the Q, what will be the sign of the W. So when Q and W will be equal, they will be cancelled and the change in internal energy will be zero. Or more easily you can say that the in cyclic process the state from where the system starts after moving through several steps is it again returns to that state when it again returns to that state so its initial and final states that will be same and when the initial and final states will be same the change in internal energy will be zero so change in internal energy is zero either for the isolated system or a system undergoing a change through a cyclic process. This was the discussion of the internal energy of the system.